You might remember a few months back when our channel got hacked and it just disappeared. Well, these two right here are a big reason why we were able to get our channel reinstated so quickly. If you like channels with no drama, nature, hiking, rock hounding, and off the beaten path destinations, check out their channel, The Adventure Closet. Today we are in Arizona, and that is the Colorado River. The view is amazing. I think Charlie found a fossil. We are Dave, Carrie, and Rudel. In 2018, we set out to explore one adventure at a time. Join us as we continue our journey to find the best free camping. This is great. I love it. Fifty-one! Wow, that's intense! <laughs> By far the windiest day and night that we have ever been in the van in four years. Finally, the gale force winds begin to calm and everyone emerges to enjoy each other's company. But before we begin today's epic excursion, this week we just want to give a huge thank you to the patrons who were able to meet us at this epic out of the way destination for our first ever patron meetup. So Carrie, Ed, Sue, Ernie, Lisa, Patty, Amy, James, Liz, Charlie, and Prince. Thank you for braving the wind. We have enjoyed so much hanging out with each and every one of you this week. And to all our, th our patrons, we thank you for supporting our journey. Okay, enough chit chat. It's time to start this epic adventure. Today, Liz, Charlie, Lisa, and myself are gonna take a little hike. And we're gonna see if we can make it all the way down to the Colorado River down there, maybe to that sandbar, by following this canyon. And this is Badger Creek Canyon. Carrie's gonna give us a ride up to an area where we think we can get down into the canyon and then we're going to follow it down. I think it's about maybe two miles down the road. But this should prove to be an adventure. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm Charlie. I'm Lisa. I'm Dave. And we're going on an adventure today. We're going to hike down Badger Canyon. Badger Canyon all the way to the Colorado River. So we're going to have to explore a little bit to find the actual trail because we don't know where it is. Through this tunnel. So let's go. And that's a pretty cool start of a trailhead. Neat, so maybe a mile and a half, two miles, and we'll be at the river. So I dropped the gang off about two miles up from where we're camped. They'll let me know when they're ready, if they want me to pick them up or not. Rudel and I are going to stay here. I have some work to do. And when you're in a van and you have a dog, there are sacrifices that you have to make. And hiking is one of them. Do you take them with you? Do you leave them in the van for a few hours? Or sometimes you have somebody who can watch them. This is Prince. Prince is going to stay with me today while we work and while his mom hikes. So we're just going to kick back in the lax and have a chill day working. I hope they have the most fabulous hike down that canyon. And I hope they can make it to the Colorado River. I'm a little worried there's going to be some points where they're going to need ropes to scale down. So we shall see. There you go. Okay. You just lay down there. Just relax. Just relax. Take a look at Prince. Look how good he's being.
Look, you can see through it. That's cool. Wow, I I thought that was a solid rock wall, not just a little. That looks cool. Looking... Makes me think about walking underneath it. Yeah. Yeah, you can <laughs> see a little canyon view through it. This is pretty cool. It's like a paved trail. It's all in just natural bedrock. Making it pretty easy hiking. rock shelf that's overhanging the trail and that's about 20 feet out these are the kind of hikes you really want to check the weather and make sure there's no rain in the forecast even a hundred miles away just to make sure that you don't get trapped in here because I think we're past the point of no return where there's no way to get out of the canyon. The sides just keep getting steeper and steeper as we go down. So I'm wondering if we're gonna hit any waterfalls or any challenging areas as we go. And from here, it's not looking so good, but we have seen hikers hiking all the way down. I don't know if they had ropes or there's, hopefully there's a pathway. Yeah, there could be somebody with uh, foot ropes here for the hike, too. Oh, that'd be cool to find some ropes. Yeah. Like Charlie said. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> How's it look? There's a pool down there. Uh, a pool? Like a yeah. pool of water? This looks like you might need rope. But maybe oh, wow. I don't even want to get close to it. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> that is gnarly looking. This is an adventure. It just goes right on down. One, it's like a giant stairway. Yeah. You land in the sand, so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, but getting up is the question. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There you go. Perfect. All right. <laughs> and check out the story. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm a junior geologist here. Uh, <laughs> so we have what we have here is sandstone that's been carved by water, ice, erosion. And down here are stalactites and stalagmites that have grown together. You see the kind of columns? Oh, yeah. And stalactites From the top, top and the bottom. Yep. To where they're connected. And it can take thousands of years to do that. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. And then we actually have a pool of water here. It looks like there's mosquito or... Some kind of larva. Yeah. Well, I wonder how deep that is to last all through you, the non-rainy season. You can see the bottom of it. Yeah. It's full of sand. But I wonder how deep that side is. <laughs> Definitely. Boy, that'd be hard to get out without a rope. Yeah. I can imagine that being a well for like Native Americans during this time, like when oh, it's yeah. dry time of year, knowing that there's that source of water right there. I bet. Oh, that's so cool. Look how far back in here this goes. Definitely a place to cool off in the summer, as long as there's no rattlesnakes hanging out in there. <laughs> wow. Challenge number two, the next waterfall. Where'd you guys get down at? Over here is 
kind of a... Oh, okay, good. Is there, there's some more water here in this pool here, which I hate to stand on the edge, but there it is. And then it just keeps dropping. Down, down, down we go. This is an adventure. <laughs> There might be a way down here. I'm gonna take a look. Oh, you made it. No. You didn't make it. No, it's a 20 foot drop right here. Oh. Yeah, but we can't make it over that way, can we? I don't know. So we're a little bit clipped out here. We're assessing. Uh, Dave and Charlie are gonna go inspect a gate my favorite word that I made up, uh, to see if we can uh, kind of finagle our way down a little further. We don't have helmets or rope. If you are doing this hike, I would recommend that. Um, or just, you know, come as far as we have. We've probably gone about maybe a half mile into the canyon and it's really beautiful and worth coming in. Woo! All right, all right. That wasn't bad, it wasn't too far. <laughs> down, down, down we go. Oh boy. It's pretty easy after that hop, but that's... Get... That's what I'm worried about. All right, so that's what I just came down. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's way up there. Traveling where no man has gone before. Yeah. Well, there's been people here before, but I think they were rock climbers. There's a, we can see a rope up here and which none of us are a climber. So probably not good to use a rope if it's we don't know what we're doing. And we have to come back up, so there's no way out of the canyon. See, it's tied off here. It's got a pretty good hold. And here it goes. I can't even get to the edge of this. I mean, yeah, it's straight down undercut. It's it's a rappel and a drop. Fun. Yeah, you rappel and then you drop. I don't know how people do that. There, there ain't no way. That's um, it's about sixty feet down. Oh jeez! Wow. So I guess our our hike's over. But wow, this is still amazing. we gave it a heck of a shot. <sighs> If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Yeah. I was nervous just watching you do that. <laughs> I started grabbing on the rock right here. A good grip right here. Yeah, I think it was smart. We hit our limit and turned around. Yeah, that's the best thing you can do. I think anybody was gonna make a 60 foot drop. <laughs> that was level 10 fun until we got here though. So Charlie's going to help Dave get up that big ledge. It's probably taller than he is or as tall. And Dave's not a short guy. He's about Charlie's height. Oh yeah, that ledge is taller than you. Yeah, it's probably about 18. Oh, yeah, there's not a lot to... Maybe you can down. hike your leg up as far as you can hike it and see if it'll... There. Yeah. Stay in that area. Oh. Nice, oh. good job. You made that look easy. You did. <laughs> Charlie thinks he found a place to get out of here, out of the canyon, without going all the way back up it. So we're gonna follow the ledge around and then work our way to the top. It's 
It's gonna save us um, over a mile for sure. Oh wow. This is the ledge that we just walked around. And we're still at the end of it right here. It's just a steep drop off. I'm not getting any closer. This is our way out. We're definitely keeping an eye out for snakes. And like Charlie says, we probably don't need to be too close together in case one of the rocks decide to roll, da roll down the hill. There's the canyon we just hiked out of. And we started, I don't know if you can see the green trees, maybe half mile, maybe three quarters of a mile up there. And that was about as far as we could go. Unfortunately, we still had quite a ways to go. I wish we could have made it, but that was still a super fun hike, just going up and down those ledges and checking out the rock formations. This is a trail that I'm not sure if, if it's even listed on all trails. So I'm gonna check that out. That would have been something to look for, but then we might have not had the adventure of trying it for ourselves. We can hear Liz yelling down here. I think she found something. And it doesn't look like a rock. Wow, this is in the middle. I mean, there's no roads close to here. Yeah. I wonder if it got dumped here or it drove here back in the day. Yeah, I don't know. Eventually it's gonna make it out down Yeah, you know, I'm sure it started up that little creek a little further than it is right now. It probably got stuck in the sand. Yeah, don't get stuck in the sand. All right, we made it back to the road that leads back to our camp. So easy walking from here, probably just over a mile and we'll be back at camp. Rudel's the welcoming committee. He came to say hi, good boy. Oh, good job. He's a little tender footed on these rocks. He's walking funny. Hello. <laughs> In nineteen eighty two, there were believed to only be twenty two California condors left in the wild, and an intensive recovery program began. This is P5. He is a male hatched at the Los Angeles Zoo in 2015. He was numbered and fitted with a GPS transmitter before being released in Marble Canyon. Today, hundreds of condors have been released in Arizona and California.
And to end a perfect week, Ed and Sue treated us to an outdoor movie complete with buttered popcorn. Thank you, Ed and Sue. I wish I could go to the Shire. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. You normally don't see us up this early. The sun is rising. You can see it on the cliffs behind us. We're up this early because we're going to the Grand Canyon. Finally going to the north side. But we want to tell you about this location before we leave. Yeah, so obviously the best thing I like about this location is the view of the canyon. You're right on the very edge of the Grand Canyon. There are views no matter which direction you look at this location. And we got to see a condor. Yeah, that was pretty spectacular. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, we have had the best week. We have had um, patrons come and join us. And thank you so much for all the patrons that came out. I would name you all, but I know I'm going to forget somebody. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's so, been a really great time. Yes, we have had the best week. So we're going to go straight into what you need to know about this location. First off, the road getting in here is part of it sandy and then there's some boulders and rocks. Most cars are not going to have a problem coming in, but you do have to navigate a couple of technical areas. Uh, we have seen no big rigs out here. There's no class A's, no big giant trailers because there's limited room uh, to turn around mm -hmm. and just not a lot of space to camp once you're here. We are two miles off the main road and that two miles is painstakingly slow. Yeah, we averaged about between five and 10 miles per hour coming out here. If you do not have off-road experience, we would not suggest coming down this road. You need to know how to avoid a couple of rocks that are sticking up. You need to know how to navigate the sand if you're front wheel drive like the ProMaster. And there's a pretty good doop de doo that you need to know how to get down and back up. Yep. So we are 45 miles outside of the nearest major town. So it is fairly remote, but there is a couple of places where you can fuel up and get gas station kind of food that are close by. Uh, the Chevron is only five yeah. miles away. Yeah. So that does make it pretty handy. Um, there are showers there, there's laundry there. Um, yeah. There's a there's a, a motel, a trading post, and a restaurant there. And we were able to get water there, but we did ask for permission. So depending on if they say yes or no, they said yes when we were here. So we were able to get water, but mm -hmm. you might not bank on that because if they say no, there's then you're going to be stuck without water. Rudel does not give this this spot very many paws up. No. There are uh, lots of sharp rocks. He does not understand why he cannot play ball here. Yeah, we have, have put his boots on, but even with that, he only is good with his boots on for a couple hours, and we don't want to have to have his boots on all day. Yeah. So yeah. So let's go into cell reception. Our T-Mobile hotspot is not working at all, and our Verizon, uh, we're getting three bars of LTE, but it's it's pretty weak. It's very slow. Yeah, and there's a couple people here that have AT&T, and they're also getting some reception. Yeah. We forget anything? Um, I think that's it. <laughs> you you will need about, a, wouldn't you say, at least five inches of clearance to come in here? Yeah, five inches of clearance. Um, mm -hmm. If you come here when it's warm, bring your own shade because you're not going to find any out here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, again, we have had the best week and it's just been spectacular. It has. Really. All right. So go out and find the beauty around you and we will see you next video. See you next week. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. 
or check out our new merchandise at oneadvancereatatime.com. We also have stickers available in our website store. Thank you for watching.